Hello, welcome back. There was a battle at our fortress in Adeida. Uh, Gerudo stormed this turn, which is good. Um, I also found out these units don't auto-bless. The commanders auto-bless. Um, the, no, not, there's like a commander version of these guys that do Divine Blessing at the start of combat. This is why not. Um, I also realize these things don't eat. It's so strange because I've looked specifically for this icon multiple times. I don't know how my eyes have just glazed over it every single time. Um, that's why none of them are starving. Uh, okay, but yeah, he stormed. He stormed with the force he had. Uh, and I had, I had everything. I gated every single unit and almost every commander I had into this province. Uh, so this is a very long fight. I might do it as its own video. But it looks very pretty. Oh, other thing to mention. Uh, there was a patch recently. One of the reasons I think that um, the sound effects are bugged in replays because of this patch. Is it, it did something about replays, but the other thing the patch changed is it made it so that you can't cast storms in caves anymore. Um, so my guy here was scripted to cast Storm, uh, cast Arrowfend instead, which is fine. We we lay down a lot of um, buffs. We've got Rigor Mortis, Owl, Wailing Winds, Relief, Pragmire, and Light of the Northern Star. Um, Rigor Mortis is devastating, that's what I've learned from this fight. We also spammed a couple of, um, Curse of Stones as well. I love Astral Geyser, it's one of my favourite spells. Rudo eventually does Fog Warriors as usual, and Gift of Flight. Some units have started flying in now. We still have this problem which comes up a lot, uh, which is that I can't kill these units. Uh, they're just too hard to kill with Mistform on top of the protection and everything, and the two shapes. Which is one of the reasons this um, fight lasts so long. We have Howl Up and Rigor Mortis, and the other thing we've started doing is spamming Raz the Tangle Heart. Uh, we get a lot of them down on this edge. Unfortunately, all of the fire elementals that you summon go straight for them. So the Tangle Hearts down on this border don't really do much. They just get eaten by fire elementals immediately. But there are some more Tangle Hearts up here. We do a little bit better. I'm back here too. Uh, we still are killing these guys in the front, <laughs> because we can't get through them. Um, our fire mages went off script and casted flaming arrows, which does buff the sticks and stones of the guys on the fortification, which is pretty useful I suppose. These guys do have very high fire resistance, but I'm sure it helps. Um, do you guys have... No, none of my guys have uh, magic weapons. Not even the Tangle Hearts do. Which I think would help against the Mist Form, right? Alright, let's speed this up a little bit. One of the things that really helps us is that um, all of his units now are almost max fatigue. In fact, they're, they fatigued out a long time ago. It's just that they occasionally dip back down. So all of these guys are over 100 fatigue now. So even though, <laughs> even though they're all fatigued out, I still can't kill them is the problem. Um, my front line just doesn't do anything.
And the other thing, of course, is that the rigor mortis is also hurting my own dudes. So, what's useful for us is that we have the relief, which helps a little bit. Um, this guy's on 53 fatigue. But I'm getting fatigued by the rigor mortis and all of the heat auras that he has. And he's just getting fatigued by the rigor mortis, I think. But we have Howl and we have Tangleheart slaying eggs, so we have units coming into the fight constantly um, that aren't yet fatigued out. And we have a few guys who are handling the fatigue a bit better. This guy's only on 85. Tangleheart's starting to build up here. The other thing that's very funny, of course, is we had two soul contracts in this fight, and the fight goes on so long. This fight is just flooded with imps, which is another unit that it's good because we keep making them. They don't, um, they don't immediately fatigue out. Although these guys have, these guys are all on fatigue 200, fatigue 33. There's a new one. I think pretty much everything in this battle now is just fatigued out. Some guys over here on 100 fatigue, 142. Everything's just asleep now. Um, but we don't do any damage. So we're constantly bringing in wolves, tangle hearts, and imps, but they, they can't kill anything. Um, the top of the battle ends up very funny, because there's just. Look at all these tangle hearts. They're a pretty weird fight. Um, he has no way of killing me, but I, I can't damage his units. Um, even the fire elementals are fatigued out. This is the king of flames, he's fatigued out. Um, I think the teeth in the hills do a bit better because of the life train, I'm not sure. Because these guys are pretty good. Maybe the life train gives back fatigue damage as well. Or still strength, maybe? I'm not sure. But they seem to cope a bit better. They do have fire resistance with the bless and coal resistance, which is good against the bless that... Gerudo has, which is the Chill Aura and the Heat Aura. Teeth in the Hills are just consistently the best unit I have, I think. It's so funny to me how many imps we end up with just from two soul contracts. You can see the big swarms of tangle hearts up here now as well. They can't do anything back here behind the wall, but these ones will get into the fight. They, they just kind of start hitting these you guys and then just fatigue out. What's really impressive though is that um, you can see that we still have all of our buffs up. So we also ended up casting Growing Fury once um, one of our dudes went off script. I'm not sure if that helps or not. Um, but none of our mages die. I think the combination of Relief and the Regen Bless was really, really good. I'm going to put this on Turbo Mode now, because the story of the battle has basically been told. It's very funny to watch. I think what I need is Weapons of Sharpness, right? That's the buff that gives you like armor-piercing weapons. This is so ridiculous. What's the attack on these guys? You're wounded. Oh, they're in a cave as well, that's right. The Tangle Hearts don't have night vision. They've got an attack of 13 though, and they're hitting for 23 piercing damage each time. Here's all the imps. Uh, this is such a ridiculous looking army now. There's just so much stuff. We're just here, just desperately trying to punch these things to death with non-magical attacks. And um, we eventually hit, start to hit the turn limit, so both armies route. Um, but of course you can't route if you are unconscious, so it doesn't really change much.
We were at the critical point of the battle though where the amount of units we're generating is absurd. Look at all these imps. All these tangle hearts. All these wolves even. Uh, here's one guy who just stood here getting attacked by 30 things for 40 turns. Everyone's routed now. Uh, I think this guy might be the last unit left actually. Yeah. But everything's asleep and nothing can hit him. So... <laughs> and then I think what happens is eventually he wakes up and flies away. So... Um... Yep. So, good fight. Uh, that was a day at a... Uh, we won, pretty convincingly. As I said, we didn't lose any mages. We lost one commander and a couple of units, but mostly everything was just asleep. And Guru lost almost everything. Um, yeah, very strange fight. I, I need... the... the Rigor Mortis was obviously a good idea and it worked, but I clearly need a better way of actually killing these troops once they have missed form up. Um, of course, the patch change that made it so that you can't use Storm and things in caves screwed me a little bit, because a lot of my damage was going to come from the Thunderstrike communion, which obviously didn't happen. So I think Thunderstrike would have helped, right? Because these guys don't have rock resistance or anything, do they? No. But we would have at least been laying down some Thunderstrikes to go along with the Soul Slays and stuff um, before everyone fell asleep. Um, yeah, just a very funny fight. Um, other battles, not too interesting. I'll just show them on the map. We, we can see another Garudan stack in Ionia, and then there's a little stack in Shibia, and in Kibus he just sent a mage. Um, but it's the same sort of stuff we've seen. There's the mage in Shibia. There's, oh, there's the mage in um, Keepus. I mean, there's a the little army in uh, Keep Gibia. And what was this one? Ionia. This is a slightly larger army in Ionia. Not many mages, though. Um, yeah. And he did leave a unit maintaining the siege, so we're going to have to break siege to get out, unfortunately. Uh, okay, so that was the battle in the data. We survived. What else happened this turn? Um, we got Earth attacked way over on um, it's one of our raiding armies, I don't know if I can find it again the tricky thing with stuff like this is that you can't just go to the province, you have to kind of track it down I don't remember exactly where it was, was it this one? no uh, there'll be a crossed sword somewhere in the forest I think but it was a, a commander anyway, he got earth attacked and then the army got attacked so we lost the province somewhere and then in the data we got hit by a great wasting cloud of disease. This is Selenia who loves throwing around um, leprosies. That's sort of a, a ramp standard. Is dropping leprosy on everyone. Um, he's doing this to um, everyone else in the game though. He's also got a Bane Venom charm sat underneath some of Gerudo's forts and stuff. I saw the person playing Kazia also talking about getting hit by leprosy in a game, so I think that was this game as well. Nothing else too interesting on battles. Uh, we're just losing territory to Gerudo, but it'll be interesting to see what happens now that we've killed his biggest army in my territory. Uh, events, these are all just uh, usual Adaidan events. Uh, and then we got a free entwining arm. We lost Forbidden Forest. Ah, Forbidden Forest was the one I remember now. This is where we got Earth attacked. Yeah. And then we got attacked by Gerudo and won. But then we got an event that just let the independents claim the forest so it didn't matter. And then in Florian we got a weird event where we gained a sage who's looking for a place called the Library of Time. Uh, this is one of those annoying events where it can be completely random or it can be because there's a Library of Time nearby and there's no way of telling which one it is. Um, but since we got a free mage here and we had some gold in the treasury I set him to upgrading this fortress. Because um, we might as well do that while we can. And that's everything. Um, so another relatively simple turn. Since everything we have is now in Adeoda and it's currently under siege by a scout, we're going to have to break siege. So I'm using most of my stuff to break the siege. Um, because who knows, he, he might move some other stuff onto it. 
I don't want to be like cocky and just break siege with a few things. I'm sending out all of these guys. Um, quite a few worms, quite a few other troops. Uh, and quite a few teeth in the hills as well, my best unit. Some spells. I don't think he can bring like a huge amount of force onto my cap in one turn. Probably just this and this if he wants to try it. But better safe than sorry. So I'll break siege with quite a lot of stuff. And while that's happening, I'm just going to try and defend these two provinces from this stack and this stack. Um, Haloma currently has this stuff here, which is not much, but there are some teeth in the hills. So it's going to get a lot of worms um, to back it up. So this will all be the next turn. We've got two um, spirits of points as well. Currently just set to do buffs and soul slays. And then since my spirits of points can actually teleport out of the fort, even though it's under siege, they're going to help defend Summerlands. So someone's going to get a bunch of um, spirits of points plus a handful of troops, not a lot, but a handful. A couple of mages too. Hopefully that's okay. Um, the stack isn't too big, it's just one mage, right? Just one mage, but lots of um, iron knuckles. <laughs> Gotta do the best that we can. The soul slay should um, be pretty good though. Um, other big thing I'm doing in a data is, since I've got a lot of death mages here and all of my worms are here, uh, I'm going to cast Agitate the Mire a lot. I think I'm casting it with four people. Let's see. Yeah, these four guys are all casting Agitate the Mire. So if we're lucky, we'll get about 500 corpses in our cap next turn. We can start eating them all, level up some of our worms. And other than that, I'm not really doing much. I'm just trying to pick up some units in this area now, so we can take back these provinces. These have my um, strange bedfellows in them. Um, since we're sitting in Haloma and we do have the spirit here who has S3H1, he's going to cast Strange Bedfellows in this province. Get that back up and running. Um, and going forward, the plan is still the same, I think. Um, Cataclysm is expected in two years. We're on three thrones. We just need to pick up another throne or two and keep them well defended. So the plan is still just to get Bedfellows up in and around my throne forts defend them really well, dome them, and then just try and take another throne or two before the Cataclysm hits. I think that's all we really need to do. Um, research now looks like this. I'm going to go to Enchantment 7 and try to cast Gift of Health. And then I'm going to go to Construction 7 for Weapons of Sharpness. I think this will help. Targets melee attacks deal armor piercing damage. I'm, I'm really not sure. Um, it's very difficult to cast, but my subsumants could do it with some communion slaves, so... Um, seems like a plan, I don't know. On the way there we'll get Construction 6, which will let us forge some research boosters as well. We've got lots of fire gems we could use. That's something as well. Uh, yeah. Other than that, not too much to say. Um, did we find a fire booster? I thought we found... No, we found um, a couple of boosters. Thistle Mace, Winged Helmet, that's pretty cool. Boots the Messenger, Boots the Messenger. Oh, we did find a Skull of Fire, okay. I mustn't have put it into the, um, into the lab. I was thinking, we've got a, a Fire F3 Mage here. With a Skull of Fire, she could do a Fire Dome, which would be quite good. I quite like Fire Domes. Where's that Skull then? Let's see. There it is. Cool. Let's give the Skull of Fire to... I have to find the fire mage. Um, yep. Yeah. Time of flaming death. Sure. Let's do 25. Because um, we have seen people dropping lots of remote attacks on us, including leprosy, some uh, earth attack, some um, ashen angels and stuff. So a protective dome over a data seems like it might be useful. Who knows? Thanks for watching, that was turn 54, I'll see you on turn 55.